a uh, bit of artwork that I got. Um, so, but that's not what you're here for. You're here for the quiz, aren't you? Let me see if I've been given the okay to go yet. No, I haven't been. As soon as I get the okay on this WhatsApp group, guys. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the Lily Foundation quiz night. I apologise. for, And I'm your host tonight. You may be asking a couple of questions. Obviously, the first one is, where's Tim Vine? Um, sadly, uh, Tim wasn't able to do the quiz tonight, due to, ironically, due to technical difficulties. Um, but um, Tim is a massive supporter of the Lily Foundation and was really gutted not to be able to do it. So I'm sure he will... Um, be helping the charity again soon. I think he's hosting uh, the Lily Foundation Ball, which I was fortunate enough to co-host along with um, Josh Whittakin, um, one of the other ones from Last Leg, uh, last year. And that was the first time I encountered the Lily Foundation. Yeah, and it really, um, yeah, it really, some of the videos and meeting some of the people, it just uh, really got to me. So I'm, I'm uh, so proud to be involved and glad to help in any way I can. So that being said, obviously at the moment tonight's quiz night is about having fun. Blimey, I'm you know I'm sat in front of a ghost dust, Ghostbusters picture. I had a bogey a minute ago. I'm late, so in a minute I'll probably start cracking on with the beers as well. But it is about having fun tonight, and also about raising money for the Lily Foundation. That's why we're all here. And you can um, donate. There is a link to donate. It is just get, let me get me one of my little information sheets here. Um, the link to donate uh, is found in the YouTube description below or uh, via the website. So any amount um, can help make a difference, um, you know, even like a fiver. You know, that's what? That's like half a pint in the city. So, yeah, anything that you can help uh, with tonight in terms of donations will be greatly appreciated. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for the quiz. Just before we do the quiz, I'm going to do another couple of shout outs that I've been asked. And then we will be doing shout outs throughout the evening. So the first shout out is to the NHS, the wonderful NHS. The Lily Foundation are really proud to work closely with the NHS and regular contact with the specialist mitochondrial disease staff in Newcastle, Oxford, UCL and Great Ormond Street to provide the most up-to-date advice and support to the patients and families we support about COVID-19. Mito patients are more vulnerable and need Lilly Foundation support more than ever. So that's our first shout out, the most important one arguably of the evening. And it is time to start the quiz. So this is how it's going to work. If you were here last week, um, you know how it works already. But for those of you who are new, um, basically it's a you know, papers and pens quiz, and it's five rounds with eight questions in each round. Now, what I'll do is I'll take a bit of time going through the um, the questions. Obviously, we're all on the internet here, but, you know, don't cheat because you're only cheating yourself. So, without further ado, we are here. Let's get it. Um, let's get going. Um, Adam Murray, just put happy birthday to Claire Slater, right? Happy birthday. But here it is. It's a general knowledge round. This is the first question for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. In which year were TV licences introduced in the UK? Just give you a bit of time, just let that one digest. So, yeah, in which year were TV licences introduced in the UK? Don't worry, I'll be giving you the answers at the end of the round. So, um Oh, sorry. I'm um, just letting you know. I've just seen in the comments there. Just looking at the side there. Um, obviously, the the donation link wasn't on this one because I had to start a new one. So, if you look in the comments on here, here the the donation link is 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 in your comments page uh, now. Um, Lily Foundation have put that up for you. So, please, as I said, please try and donate um, whatever you can. So, question number two. Apart from a battle. What did Nelson lose at Tenerife in 1797? That's the question again. Apart from the battle, what did Nelson lose at Tenerife in 1797? I went to Tenerife after I finished um, secondary school with some of my mates hoping to lose something, but I don't think it's going to be the same thing that Nelson ultimately ended up losing in Tenerife in 1797, different times, different people as well. Right then, question number three. 
Which actress appears with Jarvis Cocker in Pulp's video, Common People? It's question number three again. Which actress appears with Jarvis Cocker in Pulp's video, Common People? I've just noticed you can see some of the kids' pictures on the side there. A lot of work to do, arguably, if you ask me. A lot of work for them to do there. But, you know, they all go up on the wall at this stage. You know, I'll start when they probably get to what, like, what age is it that you're meant to start saying that's not good enough for the kitchen wall? I don't know. But, you know, they're what, like, three and, you know, the youngest isn't even two yet. So, you know, you've got to bear with, I suppose. Right then, question number four. What does E represent in E equals MC squared? So what does the letter E represent in the equation E equals MC squared. It's got a glass of water. It's nervy stuff, this, isn't it? I don't know how you feel playing. Question number five, just giving you a bit of time here, just if you need to, to um, confer. So question number five, who was the first man to walk on the moon? Question number five again, who was the first man to walk on the moon? And I hope that most of you will get this one. We've got a couple of more shout outs to do. We've got a shout out to Sarah Jane, who's a nurse. Um, thank you for all the amazing work you're doing, Sarah Jane. The NHS are just incredible. And so are you. And also uh, another shout out to Aggie, who is a key working postman. So I hope I said that name right. Yep. That's Aggie. So, yeah, big shout out to you as well, Aggie. Right then, number six. Who played the Ringo Kid in the original Stagecoach film? So that's who played the Ringo Kid in the original Stagecoach film? And by the way, just for anyone watching, if you if you miss um, out any... Uh, any questions, they are in the comments page here as well. So Steve's kindly putting them up um, to help you guys as well. So they all are all here. So question number seven, a Methuselah of wine holds the equivalent of how many bottles? I think it's, it's that's how it's pronounced. But you get what I'm on about, didn't you? A, a Methuselah or Methuselah of wine holds the equivalent of how many bottles? And question number eight, what is the highest mountain in Great Britain? Question number eight again, what is the highest mountain in Great Britain? Rob Bradley Smith has asked me how many of these I would have got so far. The answer, Rob Bradley Smith, is all eight because I've got the answers in front of me, pal. So also because I'm just dead clever. <laughs> as proved by my pronunciation of Methuselah. I wouldn't have got that right. I'd have got a few of them right, mate. I'd have got a few. Okay. So we've got another shout out to the Gage family and happy birthday to my to dad, Matthew Tranter. And also a big up to Steve, who is putting the questions up. He's also written the questions. So, you know, he gives the tests. Um, right then. So that was the first round of questions uh, for you. I hope you've all got them. Like, I'll give you like another lot, like, you know, maybe another 30 seconds just to think about them again. Do you want me to, I'll have a quick read through them again for you. Number one, in which year were TV licenses introduced in the UK? Number two, apart from a battle, what did Nelson lose at Tenerife in 1797? Which actress, is question number three, which actress appears with Jarvis Cocker in Pulse Video? Common people. What does, question number four, what does E represent in E equals MC squared? Number five, who was the first man to walk on the moon? Number six, who played the Ringo Kid in the original stagecoach film? Number seven, a Methuselah of wine holds the equivalent of how many bottles? And number eight, what is the highest mountain in Great Britain? Spencer Austin on the comments says, happy birthday, Matthew and care from Lucy. Can't wait to catch up with you all in the ball. So at the ball.
Lovely. And Joan Williams says, shout out to Team Ellie May. Eleanor Wright says, happy birthday, Paul, the player. Says, big up, Steve. Kim Nicholson says, please shout out for Betsy and Co. She's about to go to bed. Um, apologies, Betsy, if you probably thought we might have got a few rounds done by now. It was a bit of technical difficulties. Okay, then. So it's time for the answers. So in general knowledge, question number one. Uh, the year that TV licenses were introduced in the UK was 1946. That's 1946. Question number two, what did Nelson lose at Tenerife in 1797 apart from a battle? It was his arm. It was his right arm. So that's what he lost. Let's hope he was left. <laughs> Let's hope he was left-handed. Um, uh, question number three. Um, which actress appears with Jarvis Cocker in Pulp's video, Common People? The answer is Sadie Frost. Number four, what does E represent in E equals MC squared? It's energy. Number five, the first man to walk on the moon. Of course, it's Neil Armstrong. Number six, the person who played the Ringo Kid in the original stagecoach film was John Wayne. Uh, number seven, a Methuselah of wine holds the equivalent of how many bottles? It's eight. You get eight bottles in uh, Methuselah of wine. So by that account, I'm probably going through in Methuselah, well, every few days in lockdown at the moment. And number eight, the highest mountain in Great Britain it is Ben Nevis. That's Ben Nevis. So give your time, just give yourselves your little totals. Um, and yeah, so just give yourself a second if you need a little drinks break or anything. I'm going at a fairly slow pace at the moment. So um, yeah. So just hope you're all doing well. Uh, hope you all did well in there. Just a couple of shout outs before we crack on to the next one, which is television. Um, Carol Evans, big shout out to Charlie Walsh who's enjoying the quiz before bedtime. We love the quiz and your children's drawings. <laughs> Thank you very much. A uh, few of you have done. Oh, it's Dale Keegan. You got you got one out of eight. Fair play, mate. Look, one. You got something on the board. It's no, you know. Well, I was going to say it's, it's not a competition, but it is. Um, just, you know. Just make sure, you know, why not? You get one, you get eight. Just make sure you donate, eh? There you go. <laughs> a little a little bit of wordplay for you there. That's it. This quiz master stuff. So he's up in the next Chris Tarrant. Here we go. Right then. The um, next round we've got is television. And the first question in the television round, um, just to let you know, actually, after this round, we'll, we'll have a little um, drinks break, a toilet break if you need it. I'm going to quickly go and get a beer as well. Um, so the first uh, question in the television round is, what are the names of Harry Potter's parents? That's what are the names of Harry Potter's parents? Question number two. What was the name of the spacecraft in Blake's Seven? That's what was the name of the spacecraft in Blake's Seven? Question number three. TV comedy Sirens is about A, the ambulance service, B, the fire service, or C, the police? So question number three, TV comedy Sirens is about, is the answer A, the ambulance service, B, the fire service, or C, the police? Question number four, which East Sender was killed while Wham's Wake Me Up Before You Go Go was playing on the stereo. Question number four, which EastEnder was killed while Wham's Wake Me Up Before You Go Go was playing on the stereo? So that's which EastEnder, EastEnder's character. So I was just laughing at um, one of the team names that someone's put in the comments. Um, I should keep looking at this because it's, it's going to distract me. Right, number five. Which Spice Girl auditioned for the part of Bianca Jackson in EastEnders? Another EastEnders question. So question number five. Which Spice Girl auditioned for the part of Bianca Jackson in EastEnders? Quick shout out while I see it. Shout out to the Cameron family in Huddersfield. 
But it's in Huddersfield, oh, yeah, it's probably not the sort of thing you should disclose on the internet. But it's been a lovely day today, isn't it? Really nice. Got cold that half hour ago, so it's probably the most boring thing I'm ever going to say. Anyway, question number six. Name the actress who plays Rachel Zane in the US series Suits. So it's question number six again. Name the actress who plays Rachel Zane in the US series Suits. Question number seven. How many contestants are on each team in University Challenge? Question number seven. How many contestants are on each team in University Challenge? Just seeing on the comments as well, um, we just put up a link where you can upload your scores as well, people. So at the end of uh, the quiz, please um, have a look at the, the, the link on here and please upload um, your scores uh, to there as well. And question number eight. In which English seaside town was 40 Towers set? So in which English seaside town was 40 Towers set? So yeah, just to reiterate, um, that link that we've put up to upload the scores, that's not um, after every round, that's just at the end. You can just keep a total for yourself. We trust you. As I said, you could cheat, but you'd only be cheating yourself. Um, so that's uh, the end of the television round. Just do a couple of more shouts and I'll go through the questions again. Uh, Josie Harmon says, can you do a shout out to Holly Ann, Sarah, Simon, Stephen, Joe, and our Moto Warrior, Chris, and me, Josie. Um, Matt Smith says, shout out to Team Spaniel on a video call between North Wales and Manchester. Ah, oh, the Camerons are in Lindley. Very nice, very close as well. Do you have a game bar 10? It's good in there. I quite like it. Eric's as well. Obviously, a bit of Huddersfield knowledge for you. Get myself out and about. Right. Here we go. I'm just keep. I'm on a WhatsApp group at the moment, just trying to um, get some more shout outs as well, guys. So that's why I keep looking. I'm not trying to be rude. Um, and given some of the WhatsApp groups I'm part of, believe me, I don't want to mix these up. So uh, there's another um, a happy birthday to Molly from Harry and Andrew. Um, just to say hello to Jackie Gunnery and Steve Fowler from Becky. Um, good night, Mito Warrior Max Keegan. So good night, pal. And shout out to Bateson87 from the legend that is Marcus Banks. Cool. Right. We'll go through that television round again for you. Just to make sure you've got all the questions. So question number one was, what are the names of Harry Potter's parents? Question number two is, what is the name of the spacecraft in Blake 7? Question number three was, TV comedy sirens is about A, the ambulance service, B, the fire service. C, the police. Question number four is, which EastEnder was killed while Wham's Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go was playing on the stereo? Question number five is, which Spice Girl auditioned for the part of Bianca Jackson in EastEnders? Question number six, name the actress who plays Rachel Zane in the US series Suits. Question number seven was, how many contestants are on each team in University Challenge. And question number eight, in which US seaside town, uh, sorry, in which US, in which English seaside town was 40 Towers set? And now, ladies and gentlemen, hope you've got all those. Um, that's, uh, it's now time for the answers for round two, the television round. So question number one, the names of Harry Potter's parents were James and Lily. So that was James and Lily. The name of the spacecraft in Blake 7 was Liberator. So the name of the spacecraft in Blake 7 is Liberator. 
Uh, just see on the comments as well, Michael Rutt says, Alex, please, can you give a shout out to my wife, Tara, who raised £1,500 for Lily last weekend by shaving her, her hair off. Oh, no. Shave the hair off. And she thinks you are very sexy. Maybe a little too sexy. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> um, the, uh, let's have a look at some others. Shout out to Team Shalom in Chingford. Shout out Team Shalom. Right then. Sorry, guys. We'll get cracking with the rest of those. Now, uh, question number three. The TV comedy Sirens is about the ambulance service. So the answer was A, the ambulance service. Question number four, which EastEnder was killed while Wham's Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go was playing on the stereo? And the answer was Heather Trot. I think we'll probably take Heather if you've just got Heather, if you didn't have her surname. I think, you know, we're not going to be too harsh. I don't have the authority to make that call, but I have just done it. Question number five was which Spice Girl auditioned for the part of Bianca Jackson in EastEnders? And the answer was Emma Bunton. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. And the Bunton auditioned for the part of Bianca in EastEnders. And number six, the actress who plays Rachel Zane in the US series Suits is, of course, Meghan Markle. Number seven, how many contestants are on each team in University Challenge? The answer is four. And question number eight, in which English seaside town was Forty Towers set? The answer is Torquay. Do a couple of shout outs here. Erica Price says, shout out to Nana Boom Boom. Floating Holiday says, Alex, please give a shout out to the wife, Sam, and tell her to stop eating all the poppadoms. Stop eating all the poppadoms, Sam. <laughs> um, uh, Anna Holmes says, shout out for all our international, for our international team. For, you've got members of the team from Ellen, Berlin, Vancouver, Ashford and London. That is a proper eclectic team. So, yeah, yeah. Um, a shout out to, to all of you. And as I said, um, tonight is all about raising money for the Lilly Foundation. And of course, in, in the current climate, a lot of their fundraising um, has been halted. So events like tonight are more important than ever to them. So please um, keep donating to them. As I said, you can donate to the Lilly Foundation through their website. Also on here, we'll keep putting up the donation link for you. I apologise. I had to recreate it. I had to create a new stream and wasn't able to put the donation link and stuff like that in the description to make it easier for you guys. But yeah, um, the donation link has just come up now on the comments. Please um, keep donating because it is a wonderful charity and a fantastic cause. And I hope that you're all having a bit of fun as well. So it's you know, it's worth worth a few quid just to get to see my kids' pictures in the old uh, Ghostbusters. Picture beyond my head. How I got away of having that in the dining room. I don't know. The other side of this wall is pictures of the kids. So, yeah. Sadly, my signed Arsenal shirts, uh, Henri and Burkham, are still in the hallway. But hopefully I can put them, maybe move the kids' pictures out there, actually. It's an idea. Don't think more. Yeah. Anyway. All right, then. Um, do you know what, guys? So I'll tell you what. Uh, we've, we've got a decent pace so far. But should we have a quick uh, drinks break? By that, I mean, I'm going to quickly go and get a drink. If you need the loo or anything, just, um, yeah, like now's the time to go. Give it like a couple of minutes and then we'll um, we'll carry on. I hope you're all enjoying it. Um, Rob Bradley says you're doing a much more professional hosting job than Josh last week, fella. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to quickly go and get a beer. <laughs> Cheers. Hang on a second. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I'll just uh, open this can. A lot of people probably don't think I can open, open cans, do you? But there you go. Believing you can achieve, guys. Just pouring my drink now. This isn't what you signed up for, is it? And a second. Do a few shout-outs while I'm trying to do this. Uh, 
Daniel David Honeywood says shout out from the Honeywoods, please. Paul Richard says free cheers for all at the NHS. Stephen Thornley says Arsenal pictures have been uh, unbelievable. Um, Chris Cross, a shout out to the Stewards, please. Um, Emily Eifert says any jokes, Alex? Absolutely not. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe's the one with the jokes. Um, uh, AKCG says shout out to Chris Gascoigne. Um, Elspeth says shout out to Dan Howie. Uh, Oh God, these are going along really quickly. Uh, David Roach says, shout out to Christina and Ella, who both work for the NHS. Right then, guys. Oh, sorry. Um, a few more shout outs. Shout out to, te hi to Team Sebi. Um, shout out to Emily Vancouver with her sister in Berlin, parents and Ashford and uncles Ellen. Ellen. So, um, yeah, uh, hope you're... Um, all enjoying yourself so far. So here we go. The next round is the sports round. So hope you're all having a good time. As I said, please keep um, donating. Uh, the link is in the comments page here. Um, it is for a wonderful cause. I hope you're all all right, actually, just in, in general in, in lockdown. That's been extended for another few weeks. But, um, yeah, I uh, hope you're all doing as well as you can be as well. And it's pleasure to be sharing tonight with you all so uh, that sounded really disingenuous didn't it it, it didn't mean to believe me <laughs> that is an absolute pleasure right then the sports rounds i was just looking down at it to see what the first question is the sports rounds the first question question number one with four olympic gold medals and 11 at the world aquatics championships who holds the record for the most individual titles among female swimmers. Read that again. With four Olympic gold medals and 11 gold medals at the World Aquatics Championships, who holds the record for the most individual titles among female swimmers? Of course, a tough one, isn't it? That one. Blimey, no messing about. Hmm. Right then, question number two. In 2019, which tennis player became the youngest ever to reach the Wimbledon main draw at the age of 15 years and three months, when she, where she beat Venus Williams before eventually being eliminated in the fourth round by the eventual challenger, Simona Halep? Read that question again. That's quite a long one for you. So... In 2019, so last year, which tennis player became the youngest to reach the Wimbledon main draw at the age of 15 years and three months, where she beat Venus Williams before eventually being eliminated in the fourth round by the eventual champion, Simona Halep? So question number three. British cyclist Chris Froome has won the Tour de France four times and holds two Olympic bronze medals. But in which African country was he born? So that's question number three again. So British cyclist Chris Froome has won the Tour de France four times and he holds two Olympic bronze medals. But in which African country was he born? Question number four. The Pistons, the Tigers, the Lions and the Red Wings are names of sports teams in which US city? Question number four. The Pistons, the Tigers, the Lions and the Red Wings are names of sports teams in which US city? Question number five. In the 2020 PDC World Darts Championship, who became the first female to win a match in tournament history? So in the 2020 PDC World Darts Championship, who became the first female to win a match in tournament history?
Question number six. In 2018, the English netball team won gold at the Commonwealth Games with a 52-51 win over which nation? So question number six again. In 2018, the English netball team won gold at the Commonwealth Games with a 52-51 win over which nation? Question number seven. What football team does Gareth Southgate manage? Question number seven. What football team does Gareth Southgate manage? Got to get that one, guys. Roxy Rooks says, I can't do sport. Come on, Roxy. Hopefully you'll get this one. Here we go. And then... Finally, question number eight. At the end of the 2019-20 football season, whenever that it will be, Brentford will say goodbye to their beloved stadium of 116 years. But what is its name? So the final question in the sports round. At the end of this season, um, the 2019-20 football season, Brentford will say goodbye to their beloved stadium of 116 years. But what is its name? Right, then, got a few more shout outs just coming in. Let me just have a look at them now. Um, Kat Skilton, who did the Free Peaks Challenge today in her stairwell, 1,310 floors, 17,030 stairs, 34,060, including the downs, in eight hours and 13 minutes. And that was inspired by Arthur, who bravely battles Mito. Kat, that's an incredible achievement. So congratulations to you. Wow, that's a lot of stairs. That is a lot of stairs. Um, and also a massive shout out to Amber Jones, who is 30 next week. Amber is a Mito warrior. So massive shout out and happy birthday to Amber for next week. Right, and that was a football round. I'm going to go try to do another couple of the comments here. So Pip Watkins says, shout out, Chris. Lay off the Tony's chocolate <laughs> Um, Shout out to Megan Rothwell. Shout out to Amberley team. Kerry Ann Jackson says, shout out to team Maisie. Jabba the Gut, great name, says, happy birthday, Stu Botwright. Alex Horder says, shout out to my mum, Eleanor Horder, who works for the NHS. Um, Jeremy Glass says, say hi to our team. Another week off from Dundee and Aberdeen. Uh, let's have a look, buddy. He's moving up quickly. Um, shout out to Megan Rothwell. Shout out. I'm not saying shout out to West Ham. Uh, um, shout out to Charles Ingram, who's watching at home with his friend Tequin. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. Really nice. Enjoyed that. Um, so, uh, Ninja Steve says, shout out to Team Hardwell and our little boy, Oliver, who has a metabolic condition so shout out to you guys and oliver okay shall i go through those sports questions again for you guys so you have another crack at them so with four olympic this was question number one it was with four olympic gold medals and 11 at the world aquatics championships who holds a record for the most individual titles among female swimmers question number two was in 2019 which tennis player became the youngest to reach the Wimbledon main draw at the age of 15 years and three months, where she beat Venus Williams before eventually being eliminated in the fourth round by eventual champion Simona Halep. Question number three was which uh, was British cyclist Chris Froome has won the Tour de France four times and holds two Olympic bronze medals, but in which African country was he born? Number four was the Pistons, the Tigers, the Lions and the Red Wings are names of sports teams in which US city? Question number five was in 2020, in the 20 PDC World Darts Championship, who became the first female to win a match in tournament history? Question number six, in 2018, the English netball team won gold at the Commonwealth Games with a 52-51 win over which nation? Number seven was who does Gareth Southgate manage? Hope you all got that one. And number eight was at the end of this fo football season, Brentford will say goodbye to their their beloved stadium of 116 years, but what's its name? Right then. Here we go. So 
Uh, another um, shout out, uh, a big hello to the Wilkinsons and the Whitfields. Um, thank you for joining us, guys. So the answers to that, I'm sure you're, um, I'll just, uh, no, obviously just to, uh, quickly, I'll go through these do these next two shout outs. I've just been asked, just remind everyone, just um, donate. The link is, 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 you can donate through the Lily Foundation website. The link is also in these comments page. So please donate, you know, anything, anything you can will be a great help. You know, like a five has said, it's a pint of beer and a pack of crisps, isn't it? Not in London. I mean, that's Huddersfield prices, but it's a fiver. So you can donate here and you can, uh, the link is now on the comments page, as I can see. So please just keep donating. It, it's for a, a wonderful cause and, and the charity really does do uh, um, amazing work. And also, um, Liz, I'd like me to say uh, lots of love to Sam Burnham, um, to Sam in Burnham on Sea, who lost her husband last week to COVID 19. So, Sorry to hear that, Sam, and um, but lots of love to you and your family at this uh, really difficult time. So we're going to go through the answers in the sports round now. The question number one was um, with four Olympic gold medals. That, that question was, yeah, who was the person with four Olympic gold medals and 11 gold at the world aquatics champion who holds a record for most individual titles among female swimmers the answer was katie ledecky question number two the um youngest person to reach and win with a main draw at the age of 15 she beat venus williams before being knocked out by simona Halep. that was corey gauff coco gauff question number three um chris froome where was he born which African country was he born in? The answer was Kenya. Uh, question number four. The Pistons, the Tigers, the Lions and the Red Wings are named sports teams from which US city? The answer is Detroit. Question number five. The first female to win a match in tournament history at the 2020 PDC World Darts Championship was, of course, Fallon Sherrick. In 2018, the English netball team won gold at the Commonwealth Games with a 52-51 win over which nation? The answer was Australia. We beat the Aussies, which is always pleasant. Question number seven, which football team does Gareth Southgate manage? Of course, it's England. And the answer, number eight, um, Brentford Stadium, which shall be saying goodbye to at the end of this season, whenever that may be, it is Griffin Park. And they are all your answers from the sports round, guys. Hope that was okay. Another shout out. Happy birthday to Lucy Bugter. Abby Jackson says, can you give Bella Jackson a shout out? And a happy birthday for yesterday, please. So happy birthday for yesterday, Bella. So a lot of you are well, you're claiming that you've not done very well in that. Although, hang on, the grumbling git's got seven out of eight. That's a great, um, that's great. Cheryl Max says, no knock in Australia. Alex, please. Sorry, Cheryl. Apologise for that. My ex was called Cheryl. She dumped me. So, I think it was for a team leader in the end. Anyway, just a bit of counselling session for me. That was live on YouTube. There we go. <laughs> right then um here we go so i hope you all enjoyed that um i think we'll carry on with the next round won't we get on the next round is music so the music rounds question number one i hope we're all ready which single letter represented the title of the second studio album by ed sheeran So question number one again, which single letter represented the title of the second studio album by Ed Sheeran? Jamie Sykes says, shout out Houghton Bridge and the Bridge Inn. Shout out, guys. Right then, question number two. 
What chart hit by Pink Fong in 2016 has now had over 5 billion YouTube views? Is it A, Big Whale, B, Baby Shark, or C, Daddy Dolphin? Dan Allingworth has just said, Alex, I thought you weren't drinking in 2020. Actually, Dan, I said at the start of the last series of Last Leg in January that I wouldn't drink for the whole series. And quite frankly, that lasted about five weeks. Um, yeah, and no, I just got on it again. Uh, yeah. And also, do you know what? I'm glad I did because now we're shut inside. If I'd have gone the whole of until March the 20th, which is when we went into uh, when they closed all the pubs, and I'd have said, oh, I'm going to start drinking again. They'd have all been closed. I'd have been gutted. So, um, yeah. Right then, here we go. Let's, uh, where were we? Um, yeah, sorry. Part three, just justifying why I'm having a drink in my own house. <laughs> uh, right then, question number three. Who had a hit with the song Ain't No Pleasing You from their album Mustn't Grumble? Um, so, yeah, uh, who had a hit with the song Ain't No Pleasing You from their album Mustn't Grumble? Uh, just another shout out. Um, hello to Hazel's Mito family in Oxford. Grandma is missing her grandchildren, Henry and Charlie. Question number four. In Rolling Stone magazine's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time, which is the only song on their list sung in a language other than English? Interesting one, that. So, in Rolling Stone magazine's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time, which is the only song on the list, which is the only song on the list, which is sung in a language other than English. Could a beer start to hit me then? I've lost my words. Anyway, question number five. From which song are the following lyrics taken? Once bitten, twice shy. I keep my distance, but you still catch my eye. From which song are the following lyrics taken? Once bitten, twice shy. I keep my distance, but you still catch my eye. Question number six. Which band went dizzy with Vic Reeves in 1991? So question number five is, uh, sorry, question number six, sorry, is which band went dizzy with Vic Reeves in 1991? Question number seven, um, which UK rapper had a number one single in 2019 with Vossy Bop? So it's question number seven again, which UK rapper had a number one single in 2019 uh, with Vossy Bop. In question number eight, in which year did Culture Club have a UK number one single with Karma Chameleon? So in which year did Culture Club go to number one with the hit single Karma Chameleon? Words are going again. There we go. A couple of shout outs. I'll read through the, uh, through the questions again. The second, Alison Smith says, Shout out to team, to team Blue Jays, the Smith family. So, shout out to all you guys. Hope you're all doing well. As I said, um, keep donating as much as you can uh, tonight, guys. Every, every bit helps. Roxy Rooks, you're really putting yourself down. You, you, you'll do all right. You've got another round after this. You've got this round and another one. Now you're saying four out of 24 so far. You might be all right. Don't worry about it. Keep the faith. I believe in you. Marcus Banks, shout out to Barnaby. Okay. Right then, we'll go through these questions again, shall we? Uh, the, the link, just to let you know, the link to donate has just gone on to the comments page again. So please do try and donate whatever you can. Uh, Sean Phillips says, say hi to the Donnellys who are also playing. So... Hi to the Donnellys. Right then, question number one. We'll repeat that again. Question number one for the music was which 
single letter represented the title of the second studio album by Ed Sheeran. Question number two was what chart hit by Pink Fong in 2016 has now had over 5 billion YouTube views? Was it A, Big Whale, B, Baby Shark, or C, Daddy Dolphin? Question number three, who had a hit with the song Ain't No Pleasing You from their album Mustn't Grumble? Number four was in uh, Rolling Stone magazine's list of the 500 greatest songs of, in, of all time, which is the only song on the list that isn't is in a language other than English. Uh, number six, uh, number five, sorry, was from which song are the following lyrics taken? Once bitten, twice shy. I keep my distance, but you still catch my eye. So what song is that from? Number six was which band went dizzy with Vic Reeves in 1991? Number seven was which UK rapper had a number one single in 2019 with Vossy Bop? And number eight was in which year did uh, Culture Club have a UK number one hit with Karma Chameleon? So the answers are the name of the, the letter, um, which represents the title of the second studio album by Ed Sheeran, was X, uh, which is pronounced Multiply. So that was Ed's album. Number two, um, the chart hit by Pink Fong in 2016 has now had 5 billion YouTube views. Is of course, B. Baby Shark, it's the song that I hear as I go to sleep every night, and I'm sure it haunts everyone, everyone's dreams who has a young child. Um, yeah, like Pink Fong, you've got a lot to answer for. Um, right, the number three, uh, who had a hit with the song Ain't No Pleasing You, and it was from the album Mustn't Grumble. It was Chas and Dave, Tottenham fans. Well... Anyway, uh, question number four, um, the song um, on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs of All Time, which is the only one that is in a language other than English, is La Bamba. Number five, um, once bitten, twice shy, I keep my distance, but you still catch my eye, is a course from Last Christmas by Wham. Number six, which band went dizzy with Vic Reeves in 1991? And that was the wonder stuff. Question number seven. Which UK rapper had a number one single in 2019 uh, with Vossy Bop? And that was Stormzy. And number eight. Uh, Culture Club had a UK number one single with Karma Chameleon in 1983. There you go. 1983 was the year in which Culture Club had a UK number one single with Karma Chameleon. A couple of more shout-outs. Hope you did well in that round, guys. A couple of more shout-outs. Big hugs to our Marta warrior, Isla Shaw, who is currently on the COVID-19 isolation ward. It's tough in there for Isla and Mummy Shona. Um, hang in there, guys, and we're all thinking of you. And also, um, Liz, I'd also like to give a shout-out to Marta warrior, Reese Burley, from all of his family as well. A few of your scores coming in. Oh, Jamie Glass, that's a decent score. Seven out of eight. Grumbling Git's got seven out of eight. Corinne Roberts, six out of eight. Leslie Cowie, seven. So, doing well. Jabba the Gap, five. Um, yeah, so everyone, everyone seems to have done a bit better. Ellie Cox says, shout out to the Dickinsons from the Coxes. David D, three out of, any, three out of eight again. What the heck? Sorry, David. Should have got one more right. I don't know. Sorry, pal. Hopefully we'll get more in the next round, which is our final round. So everybody want a little break or should we um, should we crack on and do the last round? Just while you're thinking. Uh, Johnny Glasgow says, um, shout out to my sister's big brain. She does sciencey, researchy lab stuff for the Lily Foundation. Lily Burling says, shout out to Bergen Burlings from Chelmsford. Hope I read that. Uh, Michael Rutt says, Alex, give us a Tim Vine joke, please. Sorry, pal, I have neither the expertise nor the timing to um, deliver any of Tim's jokes. He's an absolute genius at what he does, so I wouldn't even try to fit in his shoes. Um, Tilly Woods, a shout-out to Banana Gang. Tarquin says, crack on, fella. That's the sort of um, thinking I want to see. No messing about. Crack on, fella. We've all got stuff to do tonight. Tell you what we have got to do. Donations. So please keep them coming in, guys. Anything you can donate. Um, please 
keep donating. Um, that's what tonight is all about, obviously, as well as having a bit of fun. Oh, hang on. Joe said break, mate. Well, all right. Let's, I'll tell you what. We'll give it another minute or so. Give it another minute. Let's just chill out for a minute. Soon. Crack on, open the pipe. Crack on, open a pint. Crack open a pint. Crack, o crack open the piggy bank to donate. There we go. Shout out to Becky Gumry says, shout out to Steve Fowler's dad, John, who's really poorly, but an absolute hero. Sorry, that's just these. I've got so many comments coming in. I missed the end of that then. I apologise. Becky. Um, Jackie Gummery is missing her granddaughter, Charlotte. Um, Alison Griffiths, a shout out to Lu Louise, who is doing this because I'm her boss. And my daughter, Eliza, who works for the NHS. Um, Luella Davis, shout out to the Davis family and Myra, who are playing from Spain. So, hope you're all doing well there, guys. Uh, Marcus Banks says, Alex, put the donation link on again, please. Um, Lily Foundation guys who are, work, who are at home at the moment, please um, put that link back on so everyone can donate. Um, Emily Powell says, Mita Warrior Vicky says, hi. Claire Roberts says, shout outs from the not... Oh, this is going up really quickly. Sorry about this, guys. But at least you're all engaging and you're not all completely bored, are you? So that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, Claire Roberts says, shout out the Roberts from Devon and my psychic Noah. Ross Elga says, shout out to the Elgers. Emma Butt says, we've gone to get Chris from the kitchen. Give us a minute. No worries, Emma. Don't worry about that. You get your Chris. What Chris have you got? Is that of interest? What is this? Bag of Doritos, I think, would be ideal for this sort of thing. Um, Luke Barrett says, say hi to Joanne Barrett doing her first night shift, night shift in Royal Derby. So hope, hope it goes as well as it can, uh, Joanne. Uh, and let's go. And the last one, shout out before we get cracking on is Joanna Winter Burley says, uh, please say hello to John, Linda, Guy, Kit, David, and Vicky. Who keeps saying shout out to Alex's Wi Fi? Is there something wrong with it? If he, it's Huddersfield Wi Fi, that's over there. Sorry, guys, I moved that in. Um, yeah, is it dodgy or something? Sorry if it is. It's, um, I'm on the, what am I on at the moment? No, I think this should be all right, shouldn't it? Oh, Saskia Harrison says, much smoother than last week. Much smoother than Widdicombe. There we go. Um, uh, just a couple of... Um, oh, hang on a second. Sorry, I'm just, I'm, uh, just in, uh, looking at the, the other shout-outs coming through. Um, let's have a look. Um, Shout-out to Kerry and Sean Vella. And, um, yeah, so, anyway, guys, um, let's get cracking, shall we, with the final round. I've really enjoyed this. I wish I'd have had more than, more than one beer. But there you go. I hope you're all good to go. As I said, I will keep repeating the question, so even if you come into this a little bit late, do not worry. Now, this final round of the evening is a slogans round. And basically, for this, I'll give you a slogan. And all you have to do is name the brand that it's associated with. It's as easy as that, guys. So, slogan number one. Taste the rainbow. That's number one again. Which brand is associated with the slogan, taste the rainbow? Number two, have it your way. So slogan number two is have it your way. Slogan number three, the best a man can get. So, yeah, number three, again, the best a man can get. Number four, impossible is nothing. Slogan number four, 
impossible is nothing. Number five, reassuringly expensive. So slogan number five, reassuringly expensive. Number six, it's a bit of an animal. Number six, it's a bit of an animal. Number seven, the world's local bank. Number seven again, the world's local bank. Alex Boston says, all right, Alex, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right, Alex. Thanks. Really good. Just join the quiz. Please donate. Um, and I hope you're enjoying it as well, pal. So question number eight, the final one, the final slogan. Mmm, mmm, good. <laughs> that's not me having a breakdown. That's the slogan. So slogan number eight is mmm, mmm, good. So, yeah, there we go. That was, that was slogan number eight. Um, another shout out, Angela Hodder says, shout out to my quiz team, remembering my daughter, Emily, who is a mito angel. Um, shout out to you guys and um, uh, to you and your family as well, Angela. Dale Keegan says, can you show your ass on shirts? I would go outside. The kids are asleep in the other room at the moment, mate. I'll show you another time, really. Um, okay. Uh, Helen Ray says, can I have your picture? Take a screenshot, Helen. There you go. No problem. <laughs> Alex Bossy said, are you only just joined in? Oh, that's all right, mate. Um, if you've only just joined in, bad news is you've missed loads of the quiz and you probably won't get a very high score. The good news is, Alex Boston, the link to donate is above, so please um, feel, free to, feel free to do that. Um, right then. Let's do those questions uh, again. Uh, shout out to the Conlans as well, guys. Shout out to you. Uh, shout out to the Newells, both in Scotland, but one is English versus the Dawkins, both in English, and one is Welsh. Um, Matty says, where did you get your Ghostbusters artwork from? Mrs. says she'd buy me one if we win. Well, hopefully you'll do, uh, you'll do well. Um, uh, yeah, I've got it off. Um, oh, I can't even remember where... I got it off some like online like gallery, mate. Um, I think it was. I can't even remember what the name of the gallery is, but if you Google it, I can't. I think it's called. I think it's called Saving the Day. So it's a bit. It's just a print that I got off the internet. It's pr oh, decent, isn't it? Absolutely bloody. I absolutely love it. I really love Ghostbusters. As you, well, I've got artwork of it. I'm ba I'm you know babbling on now, so I'm going to go through those questions again, guys. Um, so number one, taste the rainbow. Which brand is associated with the slogan, Taste the Rainbow? Number two, Have It Your Way. Number three, The Best a Man Can Get. Number four, Impossible is Nothing. Number five, Reassuringly Expensive. Number six, It's a Bit of an Animal. Number seven, The World's Local Bank. And number eight, Mmm, Mmm, Good. So there we go. They were the slogans in our final round. Name the brand. Um, another uh, shout out is um, another shout out. Uh, we did a shout out to the to the Conlans and Helen just uh, lost her daughter Tizzy two years ago to Mito at just twenty two. So once again, the shout out. Um, to you guys and all my love to you and your family and Liz says hello to Freya and Paige Cook so guys um oh and shout out to the Palmer family who lost their Mito Warrior last year 
it's quite humbling to see in the shout outs um just how how many of you shout outs to to families who are sadly lost uh loved ones and i can't imagine um what you've all been through and the, the fact that you keep working and helping to fund research into into this disease is is incredible and the Lilly Foundation as I said does such amazing work and I really do hope that we've raised some money tonight and I'd happily come back and do this um, many more times as many as I like to um, to try and help out as well because it really is an, an incredible charity and I saw last year at the ball just how much of an impact it has made to all of the families and um, yeah so just it's such an honour to have done this for you guys tonight. Um, so I'm going to give you the answers to number eight now um the slogan the, the brand um so the slogan number one taste the rainbow the brand is skittles number two have it your way um it's burger king number three the best a man can get is number three the best a man can get is obviously it's gillette number four Impossible is nothing is Adidas. Number five, reassuringly expensive is Stella Artois. Number six, it's a bit of an animal, is Pepperami. Number seven, the world's local bank. Of course, that's HSBC. And number eight, mm, mm, good. That was Campbell's Soup. So there we go, guys. That's the answers to the last round. I'll give you a second to um, digest those and total up your scores. Hope you've all done well. So a few of your scores coming in. Andrew Smith, 25 out of 40 is decent, pal. That's not bad. So I hope you all did well. And more importantly, I hope you've all had a good time. And, and obviously, I hope you've all um, donated uh, as well. As I said, it's been it's been a pleasure doing it tonight. Apologies for the um, uh, apologies for some of the technical difficulties at the start, guys. Um, but yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this tonight so a lot of your scores uh are coming in i just saw in the comments as well that um there's been some problems with the just giving page but of course please guys um don't let that put you off please just keep um keep donating and um and yeah and just keep supporting um lily foundation um rob bradley smith says who is hosting next week technology being dodgy aside well, I'm pleased to tell you that the next quiz will be next Wednesday and that will be being hosted by none other than football commentary legend Jonathan Pierce. So Jonathan Pierce, one of the great voices of football, um, will be hosting the quiz next Wednesday, the 22nd. Um, he'll be taking over, I'm sure. The technology will support him. Also, what an absolute treat that is. Just close your eyes and listen to him answer, ask the questions. It'll sound like, it'll feel like you're listening to him commentate on a football match. It'll be absolute, Jonathan's a lovely man as well. So, yeah, um, Jonathan will be doing the quiz next week. Um, so a few, um, shout outs, uh, so a few more of your scores coming in, some blocks on 26. Again, these aren't bad scores. These aren't bad scores. Just to let you know, you can, so to submit the scores, the link has been on the comments page already. I'm sure we'll be putting it up again. Um, so yeah, you can submit your scores there. Actually, do you know what? In amongst all of the, um, excitement, I don't know if I even announced the winners that I was meant to from last week's um, competition, uh, from last week's quiz. So last week's quiz, a uh, big congratulations went to the winning teams, the Hippos and the Dublin Mollies. So congratulations to you guys. Um, if you can email 
Janet um, from the Lily Foundation to arrange to receive your prize. Her email address is Janet at the Lily Foundation dot org dot UK. So there you go. So you can um, those guys from last week who won last week's quiz. That was the winning teams, the hippos and the Dublin mollies. Please email in um, to arrange to receive your prizes. So the link to upload the the um, your scores has gone in. As I said, I really um, I hope you've all um, had a great night. I um, hope you all enjoyed it. I've never been a quiz master before, so I'm sorry if I was a little bit um, rusty uh, for you. But um, yeah, it was as I said, it was a it was a pleasure to to be um, to be here doing this tonight. And hopefully, I'll see you um, see some of you again uh, in the future, and um, hopefully get to do another another quiz. Um, just one final um, push for donations. No matter how much you um, can donate um hello to a large please um do donate the link is to um the just giving page is on the comments now um and again you can still you can find um the link you can go to through the lillian foundation website as well and it will all be on there for, for for you to for you to donate um i think that is us done um i just um just give me one second i'll just see You can just watch me having a drink for a second. Um, just wait and see if we've got a total for donations for tonight that I can give you, just so we can um, have a look. Just bear with me one second. This is the glory of WhatsApp. Just give me one second. Sorry, guys, about this. Yeah, just wanted to see if I, if I was just asking the guys from Lily Foundation, I'd just see if I, if I could give you a total of how much we've all raised tonight. Um, so, um, so we have raised. Wow, tonight we have raised an incredible. We've raised a total of nine thousand three hundred pounds. Um, wow, that is an incredible total. So, thank you so much to all of you who have donated and who've played the quiz tonight. Um. Yeah, so it was an absolute pleasure to be here, and I'm so happy that we've been able to donate such a large amount of money um, to the Lilly Foundation. It's an amazing charity, and please continue to support them and continue um, yeah, doing these quizzes. Do you know what? I'll probably be playing next week. So, um, yeah, thanks a lot, uh, guys. Um, a pleasure. So um, that's it from me. Um, well done to all of you. Thanks a lot. It's been an absolute honour to have done this. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.